Hello and welcome to Clara Dogford's VTuber Design Tips. I have a few notes before we get started. Number one, I am not a trained character artist or designer. Um, these are tips that I have sort of found or learned about or developed in my own process of designing VTubers for myself. Um, so number one, I am like not a professional and I want to make that very clear. These are just steps that I have taken that have helped me. Um, housekeeping number two, you can ignore any of these. I want to make this very clear. These are just ideas and, and processes that have helped me. But if if you don't if you don't want to follow these 10 steps I've made, that's completely cool. Like I'm going to talk about in the future, like, oh, simplicity is good. But if you want a design that's not simple, that's cool and that's OK. So I want to make this very clear. These are not hard and fast rules. This is really a brainstorming session, right? This is not a tutorial about how to use Vroid Studio or Live 2D Cubism. This is the brainstorming phase, right? This is like, how do you actually come up with a VTuber design that you like? That's what this is all about. Um, so as we get into these steps, I'm going to talk a lot about like, you can have multiple ideas and go back and 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 change them. Um, finally, I so I've organized this into 10 steps because that was the way that made the most sense for me to teach these concepts but it's not like you have to do step one and then you have to do step two and then you have to do step three it's all very loosey-goosey so feel free to like jump between tips or um, go back and revisit a concept so like you said Meyer, step one have fun yes that's the step zero have fun with this um, the design that you're going for should be a design that you like and that you resonate with um, so this is just really to help you sort of kind of narrow down your ideas because it's it's kind of intimidating to be like, oh, what kind of VTuber do I want to be? That's a really hard question to answer. So hopefully um, this can assist. So let's go. Um, I have organized my personal VTuber design concept design into two phases. I have a concept phase and then we're going to talk about the design phase. So the concept phase is a little bit more amorphous and this is more just like generally what kind of vtuber do you want right um you can start grabbing references in this this stage if you want but you don't have to um yeah <laughs> to quote barbarossa there are more guidelines than rules <laughs> exactly these are all this is all very loosey-goosey please don't like feel free to ignore any of this at any time um but first we're gonna talk the concept phase of like what actually do you want your vtuber to look like i'm gonna apologize now I think this is like my ugliest slide by far, but I had a lot of examples I wanted to put on it. So first up, I think a good place to start is asking what kind of species do you want your VTuber to be? Um, commonly VTubers are humanoid like myself, so they have some kind of human shape, um, but they may also have elf ears or horns, or they might have be a horse girl. They might be part human, part animal. They might be part mythological creature. Um, you can look to mythology for inspiration. You can look to animals for inspiration. Um, you could also do something that's not humanoid in nature at all. You could be a slime. You could be an animal, like a full animal, not like an animal humanoid. Um, a quick note, please don't worry about being the first to do something as a VTuber. Because um, I can tell you right now, like, not that your ideas aren't interesting or unique, but like everything's been done. You know, like every everything's been done. So please don't stress yourself about having to have a super unique concept. Just go for a concept that you like. Go for a concept that you resonate with. And it's okay if you have more than one. When I was going through my rebrand, I had a list of, of options. I thought maybe I'll be a horse girl. Maybe I'll be an angel. Um, maybe I'll be an Alron or a plant girl. So you can have more than one option sort of set aside. But choose what you resonate with. Choose um designs or concepts that you really like or are inspired by um i would like to make a quick note i am not a lawyer this is not legal advice i truly don't know that much about law but i do want to make a note about being mindful of copyright trademarks and intellectual properties um it's one thing to be inspired by something for example i used to have vtuber design that was a slime and that was inspired by a lot of different slime media it was inspired by Rimuru from Slime Tensei, it was inspired by Dragon Quest, but it wasn't, I didn't brand myself around those properties. It was my own design and my own lore, right? The thing is, let's say you're a really big fan of Lord of the Rings and you say, I'm going to be a Hobbit VTuber. 
J.R.R. Tolkien's estate, I believe, has the word Hobbit trademarked or copyrighted. Either way, they like legally own the word Hobbit. Um, so if you're profiting off of something that uses the word Hobbit and you don't have the right to do so, that could potentially be really murky. And that's actually happened before. In the first edition of Dungeons and Dragons, there was a playable race called Hobbits. And the Tolkien estate said, no, 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 <laughs> you don't own that. <laughs> and so ever since, in D, D, there's a race called halflings. So keep that in mind. Um, please, please be very mindful of that. I'm not, and I want to be real clear, do not go attacking VTubers who might do something like that. I have no problem if VTubers want to do that. But if you plan on profiting off of being a VTuber, you might land yourself in some hot water. So I'd really recommend um, inspiration's great, but like don't brand yourself off of something you don't have the right to brand yourself with, you know? When in doubt, avoid it. If you're not sure, if you're not sure, just don't, just, just avoid it. <laughs> like as another, as another example, like if you're a really big fan of Final Fantasy, that's great. But calling yourself an all raw VTuber could potentially be a problem. But calling yourself a dragon VTuber, you'll be fine. Um, I have it. They have it trademarked. Yes. Yeah, I don't want, I like forget what each one means. Hold on, I should turn that off because I don't want to be bleffing when I'm trying to be academic and smart. <laughs> I might, I forgot to turn off a bunch of channel points for this. Let me do that real quick. Not that I don't like doing them, but I don't want to get distracted uh, when I'm trying to get through a bunch of stuff today. Cool. Okay. Um, yes. Academic blip. <laughs> You mean Hawk the pig or the receptionist elf girl from picking up girls in the dungeon? Yeah, these were just examples, right? I'm not saying copy these designs. I just wanted to give you an idea of like all the different directions you can go with your VTuber. I know that there's like a hamburger VTuber in Japan. Like it's literally a hamburger that talks. Like you have a lot of ideas. You have a lot of options for your VTuber. One other quick tip for species though. Um, if you know you want to use Vroid Studio to get started because it's so affordable, Please understand that Vroid Studio, as of right now, really only works with humanoid models. Um, I'm sure you could try and get creative. I know using the bodysuit feature, you can make kind of like furry anthropomorphic designs, but, and you can like add wings and accessories, but you can't do a silhouette that's not humanoid. Um, so keep that in mind too. Like if you know going into this that you want to go for Vroid, you may have to start with a humanoid design. Um, if you know you don't want to do that, then you're probably going to be looking either at Live 2D or commissioning a unique 3D model. So just some other thoughts. But again, choose a few different species of, of creature or mythology that you like. You can always even make something for yourself and, and, and make your own creature, but just kind of like jot down some, some concepts that you like personally. I don't care if it's a pink cat girl. If you like pink cat girls, write it down. That's okay. <laughs> we can come back to it. Yes, PNG, also a valid option. Absolutely. PNG is frankly a little bit more freeing because you can do like whatever you want. Um, and all you have to do is make it have like two different mouth movements and then you can always save up and commission a better model. Um, I don't really want to talk too much about the differences between models. Um, I will say for the purposes of this, the purposes of this video and this stream, I will be talking about VTubing as though you are using a model that moves and I will be talking about it as though you're using a humanoid model only because that's where my experience is from. Um, but please understand, you can absolutely choose to do a PNG and PNG tubing is completely valid. And anyone who says otherwise is lame. <laughs> pink cat girls, you say? <laughs> I love pink cat girls. <laughs> uh, yes, you can also use GIFs if you're using V802 tubes. So you have a lot of options. Um, but for today, I'm just gonna be talking about humanoid. That's what I know to design for. So concept phase, get your, get your species figured out. Okie dokie. Next up, um, this is super simple in comparison, but consider the age of your VTuber because age can inform a lot about design, right? So on the left, we have Boji from um, uh, Osama Ranking, Ranking of Kings, and he's a young child, he's a prince, and he's a very simple design, but he has lots of round shapes. Um, he's a very small in stature, and we can tell that he's young just by looking at his design, right? He has he's flush, He's these big bright eyes, he's this small little round face, he's this little crown. 
Um, so age can really inform a lot about a design. Whereas we have on the right, we have Domas, who's like, I think at least in his 20s, he's like an adult knight. So he has more angular features. He has a longer face. Um, his eyes are a little bit smaller. He has a bigger nose because he's he's grown, right? He's like grown into his body. So I know with VTubers, <laughs> it's oftentimes like they look 20 and are a thousand years old and that's completely fine, but it's still helpful for a design to consider like how old do you want your VTuber to look? Because if somebody's like going to be, if, they're, if your VTuber is going to be in their 50s, right? They might have some crow's feet. They might have some peppered hair. Um, if they've lived longer, they might have some scars or stretch marks or, or beauty marks. Um, so shape can really help communicate a lot about a design. So that's why I want you to think about what do you want the age of your design to communicate? Um, what do you want it to look like? And this also works even for non-humanoid VTubers, right? Because like dogs even will get like little grays around their muzzle. It's really cute. So there's different ways you can communicate age. I will be an elder. <laughs> ranking of Kings was so good. Quite frankly, I just wanted an excuse to talk about Ranking of Kings. It's one of my favorite series. This is quick unrelated sidebar. I personally think Ranking of Kings is a great anime for people who don't like anime because it doesn't really fall into any anime tropes that I can think of. Um, it's a really great story. It's really cute animation. It's crazy fight sequences. Watch it. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. I love how everyone's like, who cares about VTubers? Watch Ranking of Kings. <laughs> it's so good. I, I love it so much. Uh, so I frankly just wanted an excuse to show off characters that I really love. <laughs> Ugh, sorry, I gotta make sure I hydrate a lot today because my voice is so dry. Okie doke. So, try to have an idea of an age for your VTuber design. It can also just be your age and that's fine. You can just take inspiration from yourself. That's totally cool too. Um, so next up, this is a bit more amorphous at first, but I think it's important. Consider the interests of your VTuber design. Um, so first up, like their personality too. You could also call this the personality phase. Right, what is their temperament? Are they cool? Are they shy? Do they get excited easily? Are they really nervous? Are they really gloomy? Are they are they gloomy or like do they get are they really hot headed? Are they really easily brought to anger? All of those different adjectives can really help inform what a design looks like, right? Because like if I say gloomy, you're already getting ideas about what a gloomy character looks like versus like a cool character, a mature character, um, a shy character. So Consider what kind of adjectives you want to associate with your design um, because you want to sort of have that being influenced. That can be influenced by your clothes, your hair, your eyes, right? Do they have eye bags? Are they like never sleeping? <laughs> Are they an insomniac, right? Stuff like that can really help. Um, also, this is just good character stuff regardless if you're doing a VTuber or a character design. Consider some flaws because flaws can add texture to a character, right? Is this someone who gets a little arrogant when they win games? Are they a coward and they don't like they don't like having to uh, deal with confrontation? Are they really shallow? Shallow? Are they really proud? Um, if you want to just be yourself as a VTuber, you can have a moment of introspection and think about like what what flaws do I have that I think could be interesting and communicate in my design. You can skip this part. I do think it's good to consider just because it can help. Um, again, it can help sort of get the ball rolling for different designs, right? A bratty character versus a haughty character. Those are very different adjectives, right? And they have very, you have very different ideas that come to mind when you hear those words. So just some more stuff to consider. And, and as well as personality, I really recommend consider hobbies outside of streaming and outside of gaming. This is generally, this is advice I have for streamers, regardless if you're a VTuber or not. Um, like I'll see a lot of streamers on Twitch who will have an, a bio that's just like, this is my age. Um, these are the games I play and that's it, right? Give people an idea of what you do outside of streaming, outside of gaming. Um, so are you someone who really likes to cook or sing? Do you have other um, handy hobbies? Do you like cosplay? Do you like Gunpla? Like think about all of the different things that inspire you. Also, what? <laughs> Real sugar daddy? <laughs> Thank you for the follow and thank you for the three months <laughs> subscription. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Welcome in. Also, one demon. Hello. Thank you for the follow. <laughs> hello and goodbye. All right. Goodbye. 
Considering a default expression can be helpful for getting your VTuber's personality across. Exactly. That is such a good way of putting it, Star. Thank you so much. That's exactly what I'm saying. Like, think about their default expression. Are they smiling? Are they a little sad? Oh, sorry. My stuff's all... <laughs> Hold on. That's wrong. <laughs> my stuff's all wrong. <laughs> uh, I'm breaking my things. Um... But yeah, expressions also show personality heavily. Regard and this this goes for all types of VTuber signs. PNG, 2D, 3D. A VTuber's temperament will inform their expressions too. Um, because you can make someone who looks really angry or kind of just disappointed, right? Um, so I really recommend come up with like a list of like five adjectives to describe your VTuber design. Um and those can be anything from flaws to um, like positive traits, negative traits, neutral traits. But just get a few words down that you resonate with, that you think will be interesting, um, or that you think will work for your design. When concepting a character, do you think it's possible to go overboard and put too much into it? We're going to talk about that. Um, simplicity in design, I think, is really important. Um, don't get me wrong, I've seen VTuber designs that are like very busy and it's done really well. But personally, as somebody who's like not a trained artist, I prefer simplicity in my own designs because it keeps things from getting too complicated. We'll get to that in a moment, in a little bit. Um, but the whole point of the brainstorming phase is you can go crazy, right? It's better to start big and then slowly work your way down. That's my personal opinion. That's what I did, right? When I was when I was doing my rebrand, I had like all of these different ideas. I had pages and pages of like doodles and words and concepts. Um, and once I had them all sort of down on paper, that's when I was able to say, okay, I, I like this, I don't like that. I wanna take this piece, I wanna cut that piece away. And then you sort of have an editing phase. So in this concept phase, go big, have a lot of ideas, get really creative with it because then you can sort of edit it down in the design phase. That's how it works in graphic design. <laughs> that's how a lot of design works. Like start big and then, I mean, that's how a lot of art works, right? That goes for like writing essays, right? You'll just kind of like barf out, <laughs> you'll barf out a concept and then you sort of refine it and edit it and, and pick at it a bit. Um, so that's the thing, the whole concept phase, it can be messy, it can, you can throw every interest you could possibly have at it. That's totally cool every single one of your hobbies and you can still have all of them associated with your vtuber um for my design i'm not wearing it right now but in my my usual outfit i have a beret and glasses and a sweater and i wanted to communicate that it's a design it's a character who like likes to be fashionable but also likes to be comfortable it's a character who really likes reading who's a little bit nerdy a little bit shy a little bit awkward um because those clothes sort of have an association with them right um but yeah so get messy with the concept phase throw everything at the wall see what sticks that's totally cool um but definitely i would say choose like five adjectives if you're really struggling if you have a lot of ideas choose just five adjectives to describe your vtuber design and again you can always go back and change it none of this is set in stone yet i'm going backwards i'm sorry <laughs> okay now another part of the concept phase this is kind of optional um, but I would say consider if your VTuber has a career, even if it's only for lore purposes, even if you don't actually have that job. Um, but occupations can inform both interests and skills. Um, and then a lot of jobs also have clothes associated with them, right? The character directly next to me, looking at him, you can tell he's kind of refined. Um, he is a butler. Um, but even if you don't know that, you can tell like he's somebody who's a little bit prideful, um, a little bit mysterious. Um, he's very sort of clean cut, very well dressed. On the left, we have Nurse Joy, iconic design. And keep in mind, a simple design, right? It's just an apron, a blouse, a hat, and her hair, right? Like, it's nothing crazy. Um, but like, looking at them, you already get an idea of like, oh, this person has a job, they have like a purpose. Um, so just some job ideas to get your brain, get your, get your juices flowing, get the brain moving. Um, you could have a, you could be a knight, a librarian, an athlete, a nurse, a butler. Um, Choose a job that you think interests you, that you think will service your design. And again, this is an optional phase. You could also have a character who's unemployed. Their entire design could be that they're a neat and they're not in education or training or employment. Um, but I find this can help really inform design. Like for example, if someone's a doctor, they might be wearing a big lab coat. Um, if somebody is an athlete, they might have like compression shorts or, or um, like a bandage from an injury, you know? 
Space pirate, yeah, but think about it. When you hear butler versus athlete versus space pirate, you're getting ideas in your brain, right? You have sort of like images associated with that. <coughs> Excuse me. Star makes a good point. Careers can also inform other aspects of VTuber design, like your overlays, your panels, your emotes. Um, again, you don't need a job. I don't have a canon job. I'm just a streamer, but absolutely consider having one if you want one. Um, again, it can be related to your interests, but that can, I find, really help influence or at least guide your design. Again, you don't have to stick with the job either. Um, early on when I was first becoming a VTuber, I had a design phase where I made a harvest goddess who then became a librarian who then became a slime. So <laughs> things can always change. Ooh, soul, here's my two cents in design. When it comes to character design, there's nothing wrong with going overboard with your design. Once you do that yourself, you yourself will notice the design feels overbearing and that's where you can start to subtract clutter in your design. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. So like I said, concept phase, get messy with it, get busy with it, because then we'll refine later. And I'll help, I'll help you explain, I'll help explain the refining process as we keep going. So right now, it's really just words on a page. You don't need to have a lot of references yet. Um, just kind of pick and choose what you think you like. Um, so now we're going to move into the design phase. So let's say you have a bunch of words on a page. You have an idea of your species, your character's age. You have an idea of what you want their personality to look like. You have an idea of what you want their job to look like. Um, you have all that sort of refined down. How do you actually design the dang thing though, <laughs> right? Um, so let's sort of talk more about how to design a VTuber. Oh, thank you, Kef. Um, Do you think it's easier to go PNG or 2D or 3D first? So ultimately, I think with VTubing, the tragic part is a lot of it really just comes down to two things, your current rig and your budget. Um, cause I love VTubing, but it is a lot to put on a PC, right? Not only do you need to have good internet, you need to have a PC that can process a VTuber. Like for me, I need a PC that can process Luppet and can process my model moving in real time, as well as running OBS studio, as well as running other games and other programs. Um, so if you don't really, I would say if you part one is, do you have a PC that can run this software? Um, as a quick side tip, if you're not sure. Vroid Studio is free. You can get it on Steam. My recommendation, just make any kind of model, even use one of their default models, right? Just grab a default model from Vroid Studio, plop it into VC Face, which is a free tracking software. As long as you have a webcam, you don't need the tracking I have yet. Um, and then you can just sort of see how does your computer handle just running VC Face. Um, and if your PC is not really handling it well, I'd say definitely start with a PNG because that's way lighter on a PC. V802 v Mini, I think is either free or like very inexpensive. Um, and you can just literally make a model that has a mouth move and all you need are two, two PNG assets. Um, but the other part of VTubing is being able to afford a model, right? So like, let's say you have the best gaming rig in the world. Now you need a model and that can get expensive very quickly. And I have no problem with that because artists should get paid their worth, but, um, if you want to go for live 2D, then you need to pay, either make the art yourself or pay an artist to draw your model, and then they need to rig your model. With 3D, either you can make a Vroid and pay somebody to design it for you, or you can rig it yourself. That's what I've done. Um, or if you want a unique model, you'll have to commission somebody to design and model a 3D model. So ultimately, there's no, I, I think, easier is really kind of down to interpretation. Ultimately, I think what's best for you is your budget and your PC. My personal advice is do not spend a lot of money to get started. I really feel very firmly about that. Not because I don't think you're going to succeed or because I don't want you to succeed, but sometimes people just realize they don't like VTubing, but then they've spent like a $1,000. Uh, and I can tell you right now, people don't really want to buy used models. They'd rather commission for their own. Um, so instead of investing money in it, I'd say start as cheap as you can see if you like it and if you do then you can start sort of investing money and if you don't 
then you haven't really wasted much. Um, I think that's ultimately my advice. So from my perspective, cheapest way to get into VTubing is Vroid Studio or a PNG model. And even then you can always commission an artist to make just two PNGs for you. And that's that can be relatively affordable depending on where you look. That's true, yeah, VadoTube is free, but you can give money to the dev, which I've been meaning to do. <laughs> I really want to do that more often like OBS too I really want to make sure I give the devs some money just because I wouldn't be here without it right so I hope that's helpful um I know it's maybe not an easy answer but sometimes there's more nuance to these things that's true yeah live 2d has a free trial but it's limited on what you can do if you're going to rig your own live 2d I'd probably buy two to three months worth of live 2d because you'll likely be remaking and re-rigging your model Yes. And also what Soul said, it's also there's nothing wrong with starting small and starting cheap. Um I will tell you right now, VTuber audiences are extremely forgiving with scuff. Like my very first model was a mess, but people still showed up to my streams. You know, like here's the thing. You could spend $15,000 on a model. You could. You could absolutely spend $15,000 on a model, but your personality is what's going to keep people around. Um, please don't think by upgrading your model that you're gonna blow up because I can tell you unfortunately from her first-hand experience model upgrades does not necessarily lead to growth it's your personality it's algorithms it's a lot of other things um, so the, the VTubing community loves scuff um, this is so you have a starting off point for a design but please don't feel like you have to then go commission a really nice model and commission all these assets you can start cheap if you're interested I have a little Etsy shop where I sell affordable vtuber assets i have emotes i have panels i have overlays and i intentionally kept those prices low because i want vtubing and streaming to be accessible uh yeah and what lime said you i when i first started vtubing i spent zero dollars on my model and then slowly i bought more assets on booth and i would commission artists um so like you really don't have to spend a lot to look good scuff brings out personality from the streamer oh for sure <laughs> For sure. Why do I upgrade my personality? <laughs> uh, improv classes. <laughs> Unironically, I think that can actually be very helpful. I really wish I could take them, actually. I think I think improv is a really useful skill set for streamers. Um, being able to improvise, like, even, like, not even for comedy purposes, like, if something breaks, being able to improvise on the fly, like, a new stream concept or, like, troubleshooting, like, it's a very useful skill set. Thank you for the follow, by the way. I've always wanted to try VTubing. Well, this is the stream for you. This isn't really touching the technical aspects. This is more of the design aspects. Yes, yes, what Star said. Canva, quick sidebar. Canva is a great place to make completely free designs. It's where I make all my thumbnails still. Um, you can make overlays in Canva. You can make panels in Canva. There's you, there's tutorials on YouTube for that too. Like just like literally Google like Canva streamer or, or like put that into YouTube. You'll get videos. I believe Kat Liente has done some tutorials that are really good. Um, so again, please don't feel like you need to spend money. If you have a budget of zero dollars, you can make it work. It's going to take more time, but you can make it work. Oh yeah, improv for D&D too, for sure. Um, okay, but design base. Yes, so you have your you have your concepts on the page. How do you freaking actually make the design though, right? Like you have words, you have jobs, you have ideas, but how do you actually make a design? So this is when you're going to want to start getting references and doing some research. Personally, for me, I find a good place to start with doing a VTuber design is to look at clothes. Um, find an aesthetic, right? Put together a mood board of a, of a fashion aesthetic that you think will fit your VTubers vibe. Um, so I just grabbed two different examples because these are two very different fashion styles, right? So cottagecore is associated with lots of like um, nature tones, browns and greens and, and cream white colors, lots of... Um, flowers and mushrooms and like natural sort of textures right wool and 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 um like fibers really avoiding synthetic materials um that's one direction whereas like grunge is very sort of like punk there's lots of like leather and like studs and piercings and jewelry um lots of like black and darker tones so those are two totally different vtuber designs right there right if I was going to give you a cottagecore VTuber versus a grunge VTuber, those are completely different designs. Um, honestly, I'd say go to Pinterest and look up like whatever fashion aesthetic and then outfits or ideas, right? So just some examples, you could look up streetwear, you could look up vaporwave, you could look up dark or light academia, kidcore. Honestly, like anything core will probably net some results. 
Um, but remember, lifestyle influences fashion. So you might sit here and be like, well, I'm not fashionable. You still wear clothes and you still have clothes that you like wearing. So even just shorts and a tank top is a fashion choice, right? Um, I think normcore is actually like literally like very basic clothing. You could have a normcore aesthetic and that's totally acceptable. It's totally like valid. Um, but think about like, what does your VTuber wear? Now, again, coming back to jobs, jobs can inform clothes. If somebody is, um, for example, if they're working in construction, they might have really heavy steel toed boots. Um, or if there's some kind of laborer, they might have like safety goggles. If they're a ninja, they might be wearing like a headband, you know, like all those different, all those different influences can definitely appear. Even if they're a knight off duty, they might still have like a sword and they might have a buckler and they might have like some armor pieces. Maybe not all of them. Maybe they'll have light armor. Um, so even if you don't know much about fashion, just go to Pinterest and grab some inspiration just to sort of get an idea of like, what does my VTuber wear? Um, what kind of clothing do they wear? Um, that can really help you sort of start getting an idea of your design. <laughs> what if they're a ninja turtle? <laughs> Big boots. Mood boards always make helpful references. Yes, star. That's something I wanted to mention too. So I forgot to make this a slide, so I'll just say it now. What happens if you don't have the artistic skills to draw what you have in mind? Commission an artist to make you a reference. But here's the thing. It's a lot easier for an artist to make a reference if they themselves have references. Um, so when I first commissioned Ibby for an outfit a while back, we were talking back and forth, like what you want it to look like. And I said, I think I would like a pinafore. So we were both grabbing pictures of different types of pinafores to say like, all right, which one fits your design best? What do you have in mind? What do you want under it? What kind of pattern do you want? What kind of texture do you want? So you don't have to draw anything. You can just grab pictures. Um, but having pictures is better than just writing things down. Because if, if an artist has a visual, they can better um, design what you have in mind, basically. Mood board? Yeah, so like a mood board, it's basically, essentially, like imagine opening up um, Krita or like paint and just pasting a bunch of pictures in it. Um, but like these are basically like little mood boards, right? They're giving you an idea of clothes to wear for a specific fashion aesthetic. Um, and a mood board is basically that. It's just finding things that sort of fit your design. Goblin core. <laughs> yes, goblin core is great. I found norm core. It's literally my fashion. Yeah, no, norm core is great. I like legitimately like norm core. It's just basics. It's just rebranding the basics, but I like it. It's clean. As an artist who takes commissions, please do not give me a wall of text for your design or I will disintegrate on the spot. No, honestly, I know many artists who don't allow that because it's going to take so much longer for them to to sort of realize your vision. Um, so having images just cuts down on time. It saves you money. It saves the artist aggravation. Um, so please definitely save some pictures for your artist because just describing things it's gonna be hard, especially because like I've noticed, for example, like when I mentioned the word sundress, a lot of people define sundresses differently. Um, and so like, heckin, gosh forbid you commission someone, you pay them, and then it's not what you want because there was a miscommunication. If you just have a picture and you're like, this is exactly the silhouette of the dress I want, you just save everyone a lot of headache, you know? <laughs> Ryan, hello. I'm glad I had images, yeah. Yeah, three to five pics easily will help. I will say, um, please don't, I, I would recommend against using other VTubers as references. Um, like it's, it's fine to be inspired by a VTuber, but like just saying like, I want this jacket and I want this hair. Like that's not really what a reference is. It's more like, like for example, with like, if let's say I wanted to commission a grunge outfit, I could say, Hey, uh, Ibby, I really want like big high platform boots, kind of like this. And I want low rates, low, low rise pants, kind of like this. Right? It's one thing to like take inspiration. It's another thing to be like, I just want to copy and paste. Like that's not really, it's not the same. So, but to talk about clothes, definitely think about what does your VTuber wear? Again, if they're not humanoid, maybe they don't wear anything, but even then they might wear like a kerchief or something. Um, another quick thought is if you're having trouble deciding clothes, decide what climate they're from. Um, you can also use culture to inform clothing. 
Um, I know Miss Lacuna has a really cute outfit that's a hanbok, which is a traditional dress from Korea, and it's so cute. Um, so you can also look towards, like, cultural dress that, that you're familiar with, um, like, 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 clothing from your culture. You could look to, um, a lot of other places for clothing. You don't have to go for, like, streetwear or, like, modern clothes, right? You can go for something that's high fantasy, too, but you can't really be nakers. <laughs> At least not on Twitch.tv. <laughs> All right, next up, this is another big one, accessories. This is particularly useful if you're going to have a VTuber that moves in like 2D or 3D. Um, you wanna have some objects that move on your model. Uh, in my personal opinion, one of the fun things about VTubing is that you're moving live, right? This is, this is happening in real time and I'm tracking movement. Um, and so having things that can move with your model can help make it a little bit more visually interesting. This is just my opinion. Um, and it doesn't have to be anything crazy or ostentatious, right? On this model, the only thing that's moving are ears and hair, right? Everything else is pretty much in place, but I still have some movement. I still have some variation of, of movement happening to keep things just visually interesting. And there's all kinds of accessories you can go for. You could go for scarves, belts, um, glasses. Well, bam, glasses. Uh, mobility aids can be super cute. I've seen people who have designed and rigged um, wheelchairs and canes and those are really really cute i love those um you can go for piercings also consider your nails especially if you're gonna have hand tracking even if you're not going even if you don't want nail polish um maybe just like a clear coat of something to make your nails interesting um you can also put stuff in the hair ribbons headbands hats um so i just pulled two different examples of designs that have a lot of accessories just to give you some ideas but both of these have a lot of movement on them you know um, and I think that makes them really visually interesting. Um, so this is where you can get crazy and then start cutting down. Um, really, I'd say just like one or two things is fine. Um, and also, like, let's say you're gonna have really short hair. To add some more movement, you could have um, a, a headband with a little ribbon on the side. You could have a tie or a necklace or a kerchief. Um, just something, you know, just just a little something to add movement. Um, like, for example, if you think about Saitama from One Punch Man, he's bald and has like a skin tight suit. I think his design's great and I like that he's bald. It's very fun. But as a VTuber, I would probably give him something on the shoulders that moves. Um, as a quick, quick pro tip, nine times out of 10, VTubers are seen from like the chest up or the neck up. Um, so when you're doing a lot of your design process, like I'm gonna go back to clothes for a second. Nope, I'm going the wrong way. Ignore that, ignore that. Um, keep in mind, when you're designing your VTuber, the majority of the time, your VTuber is seen from the waist up. So I'm not saying don't make the bottom of your VTuber interesting, but personally, I think if your most interesting visual elements are the waist down, nine times out of 10, they're not gonna be seen. Um, so this is especially important if you're budget conscious. You can commission a model that's only a waist up because you very rarely see a VTuber's feet. Let's be real. Outside of outfit reveals, you're really not looking at their feet. Um, so I personally recommend keep the most, most visually interesting aspects of your design waist up, chest up, even neck up. Um, again, you can't be nakers on Twitch, but um, if you want to have a really complex top and then pretty simple bottoms, that's fine because like nine times out of ten, it's not really going to get seen, you know? Um, so just another thought for you there. Um, but for accessories, I would say, looking at your design, ask yourself, other than hair, is anything moving? And if not, I would say, get at least one thing, earrings, um, even a single earring is fine. Um, and again, like other things that move, ears, right? Um, wings, tails, those can all have an add movement. Uh, and again, you don't have to go crazy. If you wanna go crazy, go, go for it, but you can keep it simple too like baggy pants yeah like baggy pants are fine if you want baggy pants it's just like sometimes i'll see people who have these like really beautiful intricate i'm sorry <laughs> really beautiful intricate um skirt designs and then like a tube top on top <coughs> excuse me um they'll have a really intricate skirt and then a tube top and it's cute but like you don't get to see the skirt usually so like a webcam job interview <laughs> Yes, in the most <laughs> crazy way, yes, <laughs> like that. Um, 
So I would recommend really think about, um, like if you have a design that you really like, just make sure that you're thinking about like, what does the top look like? Um, if you want to be shirtless, right? That's like, I, I, I still have something covering the nip knops. That's fine, but you're gonna need a little bit extra. <laughs> Has there ever been a horror style field tubular? Oh, tons. Look no further than Cabal. Cabal? Cabal has an excellent design, also because Cabal's design communicates Cabal's brand, which is that they are a horror VTuber who plays horror games primarily. Cabal's amazing. Also, if you're just looking for tips on like VTubing and like growth and marketing, Cabal has really good videos. Highly recommend their videos. Trust me, half the time when I add pants to the model, it's the same pants texture. No one's gonna know and see. Yeah, no, no one's gonna go. No one's gonna see, like, I promise you. Like, I spent so much time making myself a pair of overalls once, and I did all this cute little embroidery, and you never saw it! <laughs> you saw it once. Only once. Um, so I would say definitely go for, um... And that's not to say it has to be super plain, but don't stress about the bottom half of the design, because it's not really going to get looked at much. Um, so I also want to talk about hair. Now, again, like I said, if you want to be bald, that is okay. Just make sure you have something else going for the design. Um... But hair could be simple, right? Like, I think Todoroki is a good example of simple hair that's still visually interesting. It's just split dye, but it's it's something, right? Um, consider your VTuber's lifestyle and interests because that can inform their hairstyle too, right? If somebody's a really athletic tom girl, for example, or tomboy, um, they might keep their hair short because it's too much of a pain to have to constantly tie it up. Um, do they cut their own hair? Maybe it's a little messy. Um, or like Asuna, for example, is a knight up top. Um, so she has to like, she likes to style her hair, but she also has to keep it up. She's like running around and fighting, you know? Um, so lifestyle can inform hairstyle. Uh, keep in mind, some hairstyles are also associated with certain, um, activities, right? Like I chose braids very intentionally because I like braids and I think braids tend to be associated with the, um, sort of like shy bookish girl aesthetic. You know, like the mom hair, quote unquote, in anime where they wear all their hair to one side? Everyone says that's mom hair, right? So some hairstyles are associated with certain lifestyles or ages or habits. Um, also consider your VTuber's hair type. Is it wavy? Is it coiled? Is it curly? Is it straight? Um, how does it fall? How do they wear it? Um, but don't worry about it being super crazy. You can have a lot of colors and a lot of things going for it, or you can keep it pretty simple. Um, tomboys with ponytails. Yeah, or a ponytail. Uh, but again, personally for me, if you want to have hair, I think this is where you can get really fun with VTubing. Um, have some pieces that move. You can change how much they move. Um, but I think that hair deserves a lot of thought. And if you're struggling with that, again, pull some references. Ask yourself, what do you like about this design and why do you like it? Ask yourself, um, what does this hair communicate? Also what Ibby said, yes, please be mindful of cultural appropriation versus cultural appreciation. Um, that counts for VTubing too, um, so, so please be mindful of that. Um, but I would say hair, um, I, I think a lot of people get really stressed with the hair design in VTubing because that can be a really iconic part of a character design, but don't, don't stress about it too much, you know? Because like I said, Todoroki I feel like has pretty iconic hair and it's literally just two colors and short. <laughs> um, or like Death the Kid, for example, has like, just like, like the hair is like painted weird and that's it. So hair doesn't have to be complicated. It can be if you wanted to. It doesn't have to, though. Um, but I do think it's worth kind of thinking about. Props, are they possible? Oh, that's a different question from, from this scope. Because props are really down to what you're rigging with. Um, in 3D props, you will need Unity. And if you're making them from scratch, you'll need Blender or... Um, uh, what's the other one? It starts with an M. I forget now. Um, but you would either have to commission those props or get them off booth, but then you'd have to attach them to your model. Um, but that's more of a rigging thing. Um, Maya, thank you. Gosh, Maya, Maya or Blender. Um, with live 2D, that would be a toggle that you would have to pay extra for. Um, but uh, ultimately, props, like you're welcome to design a prop, but you'll have to pay to have it rigged to your model. And I'm going to be honest. Props don't really get used that much. Well, I guess it depends on the VTuber, but I would say if you're if you're just starting out, don't stress yourself with props. Um, like hats for for 3D models, like for viewers specifically, hats are props, glasses can be props. Um, but like like weapons or like things that you're holding, 
I don't really see them used regularly. So I would say before you spring for that financially, I'd say try VTubing first, see how you like it, kind of. What's harder to make? That is completely up to personal preference and skill set. I think both have their challenges for different reasons. I think 3D is like slightly more accessible because you can start with the Vroid model. Whereas with Live 2D, you have to like make all of your PSD files and then you have to rig them all. Um, I don't think one's easier than the other. I think a lot of it depends on like what clicks for you and how much money and time you have. Because um, it's taken me a year and a half to learn 3D rigging and I've only ever done it with Vroid Studio. I'm just starting to learn Blender and it makes my brain cry. So. I hate, like, I, I'm sorry that it's not an easy answer of like, oh, this was easier. But the reality is it really depends on your current skill set and how much time you have to learn something and how much money you have to learn something. Because sometimes you have to pay extra for things. Um, oh yeah, so we're gonna talk about silhouettes next. Silhouettes are extremely important. So the silhouette, is, if you don't know, a silhouette is the outline of an object. Um, it's often filled with black and then illuminated with light from behind. So you can tell me who this character is, right? Just by looking at the silhouette, y'all can tell me who this character is. I have never watched this anime. I think I've maybe read like a chapter of the manga, but we all know that Sailor Moon because her silhouette is so iconic. And it's worth noting, her, her design's very simple, right? She has, um, she has her really big hair, her little buns. She has her little tiny skirt, her little sailor top and her um, below the knee boots. Ultimately, it's a really simple design but it's really memorable because the silhouette is visually interesting. Um, so a huge, a huge tip I have is if you were to make your VTuber design a silhouette, does it stand out? Is it recognizable? Is it visually interesting? Um, that can really help you guide your design. Um, so now the hair doesn't always have to be big, right? But you want to kind of think about shape and um, proportion. If you're gonna have really short hair, maybe you're gonna have a really long um, skirt or um, maybe really long sleeves. Um, a tip I've seen on Twitter before, this is not mine. I really wish I could remember the account and I don't, but a really good tip I've seen for character design is avoiding quote unquote ladders. Um, so sometimes when you make a character, um, everything will be drawn proportionally, right? You'll have a t-shirt that ends at the waist and then you'll have pants that start right below the shirt and then those pants end at the knee, and then you'll have boots that start at the bottom of the knee, and everything's sort of very um, evenly spaced. So the design almost looks like a ladder, right? And everything's sort of like one on top of the other. Sailor Moon avoids the ladder by playing with length of clothing, right? So the boots are, are long and go to the mid thigh, the skirt's short, the arm sleeves are, are short, uh, and then she has little gloves that go to like the mid wrist. Um, and then she has this really long hair, right? So another tip, if you're struggling to make sure that you have an interesting silhouette, start looking for ladders. Is everything in proportion or is everything sort of out of proportion? We can use my other outfit. If you've seen my main outfit before, um, I have like long sleeves, but then a short skirt and that sort of plays up the silhouette a little bit. And then I have long hair. So silhouettes are really important. I will also talk really briefly about shapes. Um, because shapes can also communicate a lot about a character design. This is getting a little crunchy, but like circles, for example, a lot of characters that are really youthful tend to be circular in shape. Um, typically heroic characters are also presented using circles. Um, so for example, um, uh, I believe like Mario has been used as an example of this. He has lots of round shapes to him. Um, Clefairy, lots of round shapes. Pikachu, lots of round shapes. They're sort of cute, they're youthful. Um, Prince Boji from earlier, he has lots of circles in his shapes. He's very, very, very circular, very round, very youthful and exciting and sort of like pure. Uh, whereas like triangles are often used to depict villains, sometimes in ways that are not okay, but that's a different conversation. Um, whereas like squares tend to denote strength, right? Let Wreck-It Ralph is just like a bunch of squares. <laughs> so you can also consider how shapes could communicate something in a VTuber design. That's getting a little um deeper into character design but i think it is worth considering like what shape do you associate with your vtuber design you know circles are friend shapes exactly um but i really think honestly silhouette is in my opinion one of the most important aspects of a vtuber design the reality is there's a lot of vtubers out there so you got to figure out how to make yourself stand out you don't have to be the first at anything you don't have to be the first of a certain design, but I do think you want to try and be your best version of your design and silhouette can really help with that. Um, so that's just my personal opinion. 
Uh, make sure you're avoiding ladders. Keep your design interesting. Um, not everything needs to be short. Not everything needs to be long. Even if you're a character who's like from a really cold climate, you can still play with um, the length of fabrics or the thickness of fabrics. Um, all right, so this is going to get really crunchy. This is the crunchiest part of this. Bear with me. Um, color palette is another really important aspect of VTuber designs, in my personal opinion. So first up, on the left, we're going to talk about color wheels. Far left, okay. What exactly is a color wheel? It's, it's basically just an abstract concept that shows us the relationships between colors. All right, so quick color theory stuff. I'm not great at this. I'm going to do my best. There are three colors that are used to make all of the colors, right? These are called the primary colors. These are yellow and red and blue. If you mix red and blue, you get purple. If you get mix blue and yellow, you get green. If you mix yellow and red, you get orange. So primary colors can make complementary colors, right? So we can see here on this wheel, we have yellow up top, we have um, blue on the bottom left and red on the bottom right, and then between them are the complementary colors. And a lot of color palettes use primary and complementary colors to create a visually pleasing palette. Um, so I'm gonna talk about a few different color palettes I'm going to give you a tool that lets you make your own, but I just want you to kind of understand the differences between them. Again, I'm not great at color theory myself. I'm trying to do my best here, and if I get it wrong, let me know. Um, but I do think it's worth considering because um, the colors can communicate a lot of information. So real quick, we're going we're gonna to make this, this part's going to go fast. In the middle, we have an anal analogous color palette. This is a color palette that's primarily using three colors that are all positioned next to each other on a color wheel. So in this case, I have this sort of like golden rod, yellow, orange color, right? In that middle top. And between it, I have a few other colors. So you could go for an analogous color palette if you really want to stick within a certain color family. Um, another option is to go for a triad color palette. This is a palette that uses three colors that are spaced evenly across the color wheel. So in this case, we have um, a sort of yellow, bluish, purplish color. Um, that are like offset primary colors almost. Some other options for color palettes. You have complementary color palettes, far left. These are using two colors that sit opposite another one another on the color wheel. So in this case, um, yellow and blue are sort of like opposite each other. Um, you can do a split complementary where you'll have a primary color and then two colors that are complementing each other on a split. That's in the middle with that yellow and then the bluish and purplish color. Um, a third option is the double split complementary. This gives you more colors. This is what I started with when I was coming up with a color palette for my rebrand, because it gives you just like a few more colors to work with. Um, so this is a color palette that typically uses four colors. This one has a fifth like guiding color. Um, and there are two pairs of complementary colors, right? So on the bottom and the top, those are the two pairs. Um, so I know this might be like, what the hell is all of this? How am I supposed to know how this works? Clara, you just gave me a bunch of information. I don't know what it means. That's okay. I have a I have a resource for y'all. Okay, so just to read to, to recap, I'm gonna give you a tool in a minute, but first up, color communicates a lot about feelings and emotions. And my personal recommendation when doing a VTuber design is choose two primary colors. In this case, I should have used a better word. I didn't mean like primaries and like yellow, blue, or um uh red. I meant like two like main colors and then one accent color, just to keep things simple. But your question might be like, how the hell do I choose a color palette? So I'm going to give you one real quick. Sorry, I have to, I have to. I have a resource that I love to show people. This is, um, this is Adobe Color. Color Adobe, I think it's what? Color.adobe.com slash create slash color wheel, all right? This is an incredible resource. Because remember all those pictures I just showed you? I grabbed them from here. And what you can do, let's say we want to do a complementary color palette for a VTuber. Um, it will automatically show us colors that fit a complementary color palette wheel. Um, and then it'll give us the hex codes of those colors. And hex codes are really useful, especially for artists. Um, but this can help you sort of come up with a color palette that you like. And it'll give you the hex codes, so then you can paste those colors into other art software or other programs. Um, and I think it's really helpful. And even if you don't fully understand color theory, you can still kind of just play around in here. Like, let's say your favorite color is red. You could look around and say, what kind of red color palette can I play with that has colors that I like, right? 
Um, maybe you want to go for a monochromatic color palette and you want just some different shades of red to choose from. I do have something I want to caution you on though, and that is color accessibility. I think the statistic is roughly 10% of people in the United States are somewhere on the colorblindness spectrum. Um, and I know I've had viewers myself who have who are, who are on the colorblindness spectrum and they've told me as much. So I know it's going to take a little bit more time, but I extremely recommend taking the time to make sure your colors will work with different colorblindness spectrums. But now you might be wondering, well, how the hell do I do that? And Adobe Color has an accessibility feature. Ready? All right. So we're currently in their color wheel. We're going to go to accessibility tools, right? Um, so first up, you can check contrast. This is really useful for um, overlay designs or even like graphics that you're making for like advertising your VTuber. You can see, um, is this uh, accessible? And so far um, for this preview, um, the text is too small for it to be considered accessible based on this algorithm. Um, so let's say that's a, this is a, so this is basically a contrast checker and it's saying if you're using these two colors, will people be able to read them accurately? Um, but they also have under this little tools drop down, they have a colorblind safe checker. So remember how I was telling you, you can grab hex codes. This is where that's really useful. You can see based under different forms of colorblindness, can people accurately see your color palette design? Um, Cause sometimes colors like right now it says there's no conflicts found, but some color palettes Based on other colorblindness spectrums, colors will be really close together and it'll be hard for somebody to see them. Um, so I really recommend once you've found a color palette that you like, please take the time to hop in here and say like, does this all work? Do these colors match? Are they hard to see? Um, are they easy to see? Is anyone gonna have any issues with this? Like here, I've just threw some stuff together. It'll even tell you specifically which colors are in conflict, so right? Here it's saying row B and row C. Um, for Protonopia, for example, those colors look really similar. They both look kind of grayish. And it's gonna be really hard for somebody to be able to see all of those beautiful textures and accents if you're using those colors. So you can just kind of finagle it and suddenly, oh look, look how much easier it is to see. So I really encourage you, even if you choose not to use this color wheel specifically, um, cause you can also quite frankly, you can just Google color palettes for ideas um if you're having trouble looking for ideas just choose your favorite colors um and and try and come up with colors that you like um personally i like using color wheels just because it ensures you have a design that is based in harmony um it'll be visually pleasing even if someone doesn't know much about um color theory so then let's say you have your color palette from somewhere else um you can always show your little sliders. This is how you can get those hex codes in and you can just paste in whatever hex codes you have to double check. And then if you're finding that you have some conflict, you can tweak your design. Um, so personally, I say take a lot of time in the color palette section um, because colors communicate so much, right? Like red can denote rage, it can denote passion. Pink can really get like sort of like more into the romance and passion section sort of things. Um, purples are often associated with royalty, um, but there's a lot of different concepts that colors can communicate, right? Some shades of green can be viewed as envious, other shades of green can be viewed as natural. So again, go back to that list you made in your concept phase of what adjectives you want to associate your design with and start deciding what colors do I associate with these adjectives, right? If I'm going for a gloomy design, they might have some more like darker blues or purples. I didn't know there were so many kinds of colorblindness. Quite frankly, I didn't, I only knew of two. I didn't know there were this many. Um, and I saw, I've seen people recommend this on Twitter before and I always use it now because I find it so helpful. Um, I just think it really helps make your streams more accessible. Like I said, um, there are people out there who may find your streams inaccessible if you're using certain colors. So accessibility is really important for streamers and this doesn't take a lot of time. And this is a totally free tool. Literally just Google Adobe color accessibility and this tool should pop up. Like I said, um, it may show the contrast checker first. So you just go to the top left corner and make sure you're selecting colorblind safe. Um, yeah, Star, we're talking about colors. Uh, so I'm sorry for this long colors rant, but it's something that I personally think is very important. Um, and that is making sure that people can actually see your design. <laughs> 
Green and purple often denote villains. Yes, depending on the colors. Because again, like hue and saturation, um, like, let me, let me go back to our color wheel. Um, like, so these are all sort of like pastel, very light um, colors. These are sort of vapor wave. These are sort of ethereal. Uh, and these are all sort of in that like bluish purple family. But if I go um, deeper into like the darker purple territory, right? Um, this is starting to communicate a kind of different design. These are also harsh colors, right? I would also recommend like think about how it'll be to look at something like E on that very last color. That's a very, very bright color. That's gonna be kind of hard on the eyes. <laughs> if you're using that as your like your main sort of color um let me grab real quick um because i was asked about my color palette so let me see if i have give me one second please oh let's go for this so i have look at me i'm so cute so this is my main um design sorry it's kind of hard to shove on screen um because it's so big um so how did i choose this color palette is the question i'm getting so i knew that um there, there's two reasons i chose this color palette one quite frankly i like the color blue it's a color that i like two i wanted to honor my previous um character design which was a slime who was blue and i wanted to sort of incorporate that color into my new design um uh so i knew i wanted to stick with blue um, and I knew I wanted to go for blonde because, um, if we look at our color wheel, um, sorry, let me get this open. If we look at our color wheel, beep, 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 oh, sorry, let me hide that. If we look at our color wheel, yellow and blue are primary colors that are also, they, they complement each other really nicely. Um, so I knew I wanted to have, um, hair that would match the blue and that tends to be blonde. That's not to say... <laughs> that's not to say you can't be a, a blue-eyed brunette right but i was just kind of thinking about color theory and stuff so and then i chose the brown and blacks because partially frankly because the beret i got had brown and blacks in them but also because i wanted to have a color palette that was leaning towards light academia the light academia aesthetic is like very um it's like very nerd core but make it fashion so uh, light academia is lots of like lighter colors um neutrals beiges creams um and it's a lot of like sweaters and skirts and pinafores um you can look it up if you're interested so i knew i wanted to be inspired by light academia which is where i got the idea for the brown skirt um and then i wanted to have shoes that matched the sweater so my main color focus for my design is blue um my secondary color is blonde and then i have accents of like browns and blacks um so that was how i came about this color palette i knew i wanted and also i had to use colors that i had access to on booth but i wanted colors that were um not super saturated so like super bright like neon i wanted something that was a little bit more muted um because i wanted to communicate a design that's um cute um a little nerdy but also kind of soft um so that's how i came up with this color palette but also this is color palette that works regardless of colorblindness spectrum i wish i had i should have grabbed my hex code so i could show y'all um but i also I, this was not the first color palette i had i really played with it until i was sure that all of my colors would work regardless of um colorblindness so that's how i came out with this oh god there's two of her now <laughs> i love your hair thank you i did not design it myself this comes from Kupopopo Shop on Booth. Um, how many colors will be pulled into the universe? <laughs> uh, keep in mind the character's own natural color is part of a design as well. Yes. So gr the Ninja Turtles are green, so other colors got to work with it, right? So when I was a blue slime and my, co my, my main color was blue, I really had design around blue and that was a little tricky, I'll be honest. <laughs> um, so keep in mind that um color palette can really communicate a lot because like let's say i had gone for really pink color palette um the clothes were the same but let's say i went for pinks right pink will denote like a, something a little bit more feminine almost like barbie core uh, and there's nothing wrong with that right i love pink um but it does have like a slightly different um emotional effect so 
that's why color theory can be really helpful in your VTuber design. Um, you can just start with your favorite color. Like I said, mine's blue. You can start with your favorite color and start finding a palette that works around that color from there. Uh, so I hope that is helpful. Sorry, that was like crunchy stuff. I think that's the crunchiest part of this presentation. <laughs> okay. So I want to do a summary of this whole process, right? Um, so first up, the concept phase, right? Um, ask yourself what your what your VTuber species is, what kind of creature is your VTuber. Um, be making sure you're not infringing on other people's intellectual property or copyrights or trademarks. Please be wary of that. I'm not a lawyer, but it, it would stink to like build up a VTuber and build up a brand and then have somebody smack you in the head with a lawsuit. So just try, try and be mindful of that. Also consider your VTuber's age. Um, that'll inform a lot about their appearance and their clothes, um, their personality. Uh, what is their temperament? What are their flaws? Um, what do they like? What do they dislike? Their interests. What hobbies do they have? What skills do they have? Um, which also feeds into their job. What if, if they have a career? What is it? Keep in mind, being a student can still count, right? Like, what what do they do? Even if it's not real, even if it doesn't really inform your streams, it can help just to make you stand out. You know, um, although sometimes it can inform your streams. Like famously, I think Onigiri is a really good example, right? Demon who cooks. <laughs> and so there's like aprons on 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 those designs and stuff. Um, and there's like a little onigiri um, in her hair and what have you. So career can influence design a ton. Um, so when you're out of your concept phase, design phase, just in summary, think about your clothes. What kind of fashion does this VTuber wear? Um, clothes can communicate their interests in their career and their hobbies. What accessories are they wearing? Because you want to make sure you got some movement. If you're going to go for 2D or 3D, you want to have something that moves. It makes it interesting. Um, and accessories can include mobility aids and jewelry and gloves. Um, please use mobility aids if you use them. If you don't, maybe don't do that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, hairstyles. Simplicity can be good, but consider it. If you're going to have hair, what are you going to do with it? How is it going to serve as your design? Um, and those first three all feed into number four, silhouette. Can your VTuber be identified by silhouette alone? If you just post silhouette of your VTuber, can people say, I think I know who that is? Something to consider. Um, color palette, the chunky, the crunchiest part of this whole thing. Colors communicate so much about a design. So focus on like two main colors and then an accent color. Um, oftentimes accent colors will be like metals, like silver or gold. So if you're wearing jewelry, um, consider which color jewelry are you using? Um, do you want to use silver jewelry or gold jewelry? You could also use like rose gold or like onyx and get fancy with it, but that's also a way of choosing an accent color. Uh, my final tips. One, use references. Even if you're not an artist, grab, grab references of hairstyles, of clothing, of textures, of accessories, um, and find, in find inspiration from your interests. Make a VTuber design that you like. If you try to make something you think other people will like, I don't know how that's going to go because everyone has their own interests and their own um, opinions on fashion and their own opinions on um, styles of dress and what have you. So I think what's most important is design something that you like because ultimately you're using it. <laughs> it's a model you're using, so you should feel like you have some kind of resonance with it. Um, if you try to just make something you think people will like, I don't know if you'll feel connected to it, you know? Um, so I hope these breakdowns help. Um, I, I hope that made sense. I know I kind of went through it, but I, I didn't want to be here for a year and a day. <laughs> so what questions do we have in regards to VTuber design? Did I do a, uh, did this make sense? <laughs> have you considered color symbol theory? Um, oh yeah, that's like its own thing. I don't know it that well. If you're going to commission an artist, references are so good. Honestly, I will say, um, please do not approach an artist until you have a reference. If you do not have a reference, commission an artist who makes references and give them references because it's real hard to design something without visual images, without an idea of color. Um, Cause if you just tell someone, I want a red dog, they're so, like, first of all, what kind of dog? Is it big? Is it small? Does it have little ears? Does it have big ears? Are they pointed? Are they droopy? 
Is it a Chihuahua? Is it a Great Dane? What shade of red is it? How red is it? How much of it is red? Like there's there, there's so much nuance. So instead of just telling someone, I wanna be a white wolf, you gotta give them like, I wanna have this jacket. I'd like to have big fluffy ears. I'd like to have fangs. I'd like to have a horn. Here's what I want them to look like generally. Um, I know that some um, reference artists are also totally cool if you give them like a stick figure with like a basic idea of what you have in mind. It doesn't need to be proportional. It doesn't need to be good. It just needs to be what you want it to look like. <laughs> Oh gosh, like <laughs> the big red dog. I have a question. Why are you so awesome? That's not part of the scope of this exam. I'm joking. The <laughs> only thing that's really tripping me up at the moment is picking more adjectives to describe personality. So honestly, Google's your friend. You can literally Google um like character creation adjectives. And you can or or even like Google like positive adjectives or negative adjectives, and you'll get like pages of words. Um, are they melancholic? Are they joyful? Are they clumsy? Are they silly? Are they anxious? Right? Like there's so many different words you can choose. Uh, and if you're struggling with words, choose like bigger emotions and then you can kind of dilute them down. Like, are they sad? And then what kind of sad are they? Are they happy? What kind of happy are they? Are they mean? What kind of mean are they? Right? So you can choose a general vibe and then start um, refining down. My VTuber design specs, I want a cool design. See, and like that, if I had to do reference art, that would make me scream. Cause like, what does cool mean? What do you think cool is, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I've had commissioners draw the most scuffed looking doodles to show me their idea. And even that is better than text. Your artist doesn't care if you can't draw. That's why you're commissioning them. This exactly, man, I've, I've, and also, Ibby's given me a really good tip. If you're worried about anatomy, um, open Vroid Studio. Don't put any, put undies on your model and nothing else and then just take a picture of the model T-posed. Take that picture, put it in art software or print it out and draw on top of it. Cause then you'll at least have something that's proportional. Um, I've used that before. That was extremely helpful as a tip. How much should a VTuber focus on the lore slash background? It seems difficult to keep everything straight. That's really a matter of personal preference. Um, Cause some viewers really like lore and some viewers could not care less. Um, so I think that's really up to you. I don't think lore, personally, I don't think your lore should be more than a few sentences. Because um, personally, frankly, no one wants to read more than a paragraph. Unless you're their Oshi, they really don't want to do a lot of reading. Um, if you can refine your lore into like two sentences, I think that's ideal. For yourself, is the hair and ears that cause your silhouette to tell us it's you? Um, the glasses you don't see on a silhouette, the beret, I think, also helps. That's one of the reasons I wanted it. I wanted something else on the head just to make it a little bit more um, visually different. This will be on YouTube. I'm going to try and edit it down, too. I, I'll be honest, I don't know when I'll get to it. The, the unedited VOD will be on YouTube in the next week or two. Um, I would like to edit this down. It's just that video editing takes a long time for me. <laughs> Maybe I'll see how much it'll cost to ed pay someone to edit this for me. <laughs> But this will be on YouTube, yes. Um, this will be on YouTube. I want this to be a resource people can come back to and rewatch. Um, that's honestly why I made these. Where is it? It's why I made these. These. So if people just want to open YouTube and just look at these, that's fine. That's all they have to do, you know. Um. Uh. But I would say if you want to commission a model, like, because for me, just opening Vroid Studio can be really intimidating. But if you open Vroid Studio with a model in mind or like a design in mind. It's so much easier. Even if you have to change things, like at least you'll have like some kind of guide, you know? This will be helpful. I'm glad that was the whole idea of it. I just want to make it accessible, you know? Should you let your chat grow naturally or try to put them, push them into a specific atmosphere? What do you mean by a specific atmosphere? Um. The thing about chat, you can't control who finds your streams, if that makes sense. Like, you can put all of your content out into the world and just kind of essentially hope people show up, right? But you can't control who shows up or what kind of viewer shows up. But through moderation and vibe checks, you can determine who sticks around. I hope that makes sense. Like, my streams, um, we're pretty laid back here, but we don't really tolerate, um... 
being mean, <laughs> for lack of a better phrase, right? If someone's just mean and I don't know them, we're just going to kind of time them out and be like, hey, that's not the vibe here. That's, we don't, I don't know you. Why? Like, don't be wrong. Like, oh, Clara, that was a dingus move. That's fine. But if someone's like, you're ugly and stupid, it's like, I don't know if that's a quality beat the viewer that I want in my community, you know? Like, for me, if my, if my community doesn't have basic respect for me, then it's not really a healthy community. Yes, what Kev said. You can't control who finds your channel, but you can control who sticks around. Yes. No mean bullying, only friendly bullying. Well, that's the thing. And also, like, a lot of it, a lot of, like, chat stuff, that's, like, just communication with your community, right? Like, communicating your boundaries, and sometimes you'll have to redraw boundaries, and that's okay. You just have to communicate it. You know, communicate, like, I think some people think that streamers have rules so that they can ban someone and have a reason for it, but... For me, you have rules so people know what the expectations are. I think setting expectations is really important um, for both your community and your mod team. Like whenever I've had a mod join the team, I'll tell them like, here are my expectations for you. Here's what I don't think you have to do. You let me know what your expectations of me are. Um, Cause it's important to communicate that. Like I tell my mods, like you don't have to be at any stream ever. Like you have a life. <laughs> if you can stop by, that's great. And if you can't, that's also okay, you know? A little bop will usually deter most. Yeah, and then, like, for me also, having rules is important because I understand sometimes you don't understand social cues or you'll people will struggle to understand, like, what the social cues are or what the social rules are. So if I can provide a list of guidelines, I want to give people a chance, you know? I know a newer VTuber who's struggling to grow and seems disappointed that the chat's a little more spicy. Um, It seemed like a weird take because they kept asking younger viewers to leave their growth so every streamer is going to be different and i don't feel comfortable like weighing on what you sh quote unquote should do because it's up to like what community you want when i first got started i knew i wanted a community that was 13 plus um because i wanted a place where people could hang out um i, I felt like you know the internet didn't have a lot of spaces um where people could do that so i wanted a space that was like chill um and not super sexualized but I realized there's this habit in VTubing where viewers tend to peg a VTuber as hyper say so or hyper lewd, right? So say so being like wholesome um, to the point where they're so like wholesome that they're almost an asexual being and like any sex jokes are like a shock. And I realized I wasn't really comfortable being pegged as like this completely wholesome, like innocent being. Um, Cause I was like, I'm still an adult. I. I might make a pickle joke now and then, right? Um, so part of my rebrand was also making my audience 16 plus, um, sort of like Peggy 16, right? So like the occasional lewd joke is fine by me. Sexualizing me, I, I'm not super comfortable with because I don't know you, but like a little har har pun is fine, you know? Um, but a lot of that's just like communicating that to your community, right? That's why I always have 16 plus in my titles now because I want people to know you have to be at least 16 to be here um because of the content because of the context and because i don't think it'll be appropriate for young children and also frankly a lot of younger viewers are still learning how to socialize and it is draining to have to kind of teach them how to interact with me all the time um and don't be wrong i'm not mad about it because we all have to learn at some point but it is kind of tiresome to have to like beg someone to treat me with respect <laughs> i just don't have the patience for it anymore you know if you can't you're not going to come in respecting me. I don't want you here. I'm sorry. I don't have the patience for it, you know? The first time we heard to see the F word. Oh, yeah, it was months in. It was the freaking goat fight. Freaking, freaking Undertale fight. <laughs> Could you treat being a VTuber like running a business in which the avatar slash character is the main object? I think it's going to depend a lot on your goals as a VTuber. If you're VTubing as a hobby, that's totally cool. If you're VTubing as a career to make money, that's a very different goal. And there's nothing wrong with doing it, but how you approach it's going to be different. Um, I don't treat VTubing as like an object, right? Clara, we'll blast it off real quick. Clara is a character, right? For me, I have super anxiety and having a character to perform makes streaming a lot more comfortable for me. I like performing and I don't know how to be a person without masking. So <laughs> Clara is a mask that I perform. And that's not to say that Clara is a disingenuous character, right? Because a lot of Clara's like memories and ideas and feelings are my own, but I like having a character to perform. I don't view Clara as an object though. 
Um, in my mind, Kara is very much a realized three-dimensional being. Um, but I do treat V2 being, um, I don't know if I could say as a business, but I do view it as like, every week I will spend some time looking at analytics, for example, and I will make sure I'm keeping up with algorithms and trends. Um, Cause the harsh reality is you could stream the best freaking content on Twitch, but if people don't know to find you, you're never gonna get found because the discovery on this platform is not great. So you have to be working with algorithms on other platforms in order to be seen. Someone disrespecting, eh, mostly mostly in uh, YouTube shorts comments, and they're just like straight up children. And I get it, they're modeling behavior they've seen and they don't fully understand that, yes, this is a model, but there's a person behind the model. Um, so I don't take it personally, like to be clear, I'm not like upset about it. It's just like, I don't, sympathy's not, it's free. <laughs> Empathy is free, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm a newer VTuber myself. I'm worried about being perceived in a sexual way. My character is very personal for me. I can't ever imagine her being perceived lewdly. Any tips for that anxiety? I totally understand you. I had that anxiety going into it. Um, I think a lot of it just comes down to communicating regularly with your audience, you know? Um, like, make it a rule in chat. Like, hey, like, please respect me. Please do not sexualize me. Um, if somebody does, just time them out. And like, I would tell people, because, you know, a lot of VTubing does have um, like a lot of other VTubing communities have sexual tones and I have no problem with that and so sometimes people don't realize a different community will have a different vibe so you just have to help them understand that um, so yeah exactly what Zane Dead said set boundaries and uphold them so for me like I'm very rarely will I be bothered by like an infraction it's just a quick little like five second timeout and like hey that's not the vibe here and I'm gonna tell you right now nine times out of ten people be like oh I'm so sorry I didn't realize and if they don't respect it, that's when you just give them the boot. Um, this is my personal opinion. It's better to have no viewers than to have viewers who disrespect you. I Don't get me wrong, I know that I'm privileged and I like having a community and having viewership. It's really easy for me to sit here and be like, yeah, you can pick and choose. I understand when you have zero viewers or two viewers or three viewers, it can be really... Like you want every view you get so you're really scared to like time people out or get rid of people but i'm gonna tell you right now what ara said the unironically most fundamental <laughs> metric unit is the vibe if someone's not passing your vibe check just ban them also personally i don't have ban requests turned on um because i just don't have the mental capacity for it i i promise you if someone's banned in this community there's a good reason for it um I'm all about giving people a few chances, uh, but if they're just they're just not listening to myself or my mod team, then it's just goodbye. <laughs> you know, it's because uh, I promise you, um, even if you don't grow the way others are growing, if you feel comfortable in your community, it it makes a difference. Like, and I've had people tell me they love my community because we have a lot of vibe checks here, and they know coming into this community, like, yeah, we'll make silly jokes, and it's all good fun, and I never feel like attacked or anything. But at the end of it everyone feels welcome and everyone feels safe. And that's extremely important to me. I live on ban because of this. Yeah, it's just, yes, okay, coin, yes. You don't need any reason to ban someone other than I don't want you here. Um, and I know especially for people who are socialized to be very forgiving, especially like AFAB people, you're so socialized to like let people go or, or, or like let people push your buttons, don't do it. And I'm, don't get me wrong, I've had people, uh, I've had, oh gosh, I had a situation where I banned someone on every social media account I could think of just because they were being very, very uh, not nice. And the one place I forgot was YouTube. So they start spamming all my YouTube videos like, how how dare you do this? Mur, mur, mur. If someone's going to go that far, right? It's one thing to say, I don't know why I was banned. It's another thing to attack. I don't want that energy. I don't have time for that energy. Uh, AFAB uh, assigned female at birth. VTubing is about having fun. Exactly. If you are getting anxiety showing up to your own streams, that's not that's not okay. That's not good. Um, and I know making changes can be intimidating, um, but I promise you setting boundaries works. Uh, and it feels so much better. And someone paying you subs, bits, etc. does not give someone the right to be abusive. Oh my god, yes, I want to scream that from the, the, the top of the world. Um, regardless of how many subs somebody gets, how much money they tip, um, if somebody's disrespecting you, you can cut them off. Don't put up with it. It's not worth it. Um, um, I, it's just, it's just not worth your mental health, you know? Um, 
regardless if you view VTubing as a hobby or a business, it's still your community. You're running the show, and if you're not enjoying it, that's not good. <laughs> so you gotta take you gotta take the steps to um, make it a comfortable space. So some tips I have if you're worried about moderation is have rules that are clear and actionable. They don't have to be detailed, right? Just like we don't do hate speech, you know, um, you have to be a certain age to be here. Um, listen to and respect the mods, right? But also if someone's just giving you bad vibes, if they're just saying icky stuff, you can just quietly ban them. Um, also, if you didn't know this, you can share ban lists with other streamers. Um, so if you have friends who you know they have a very similar vibe to your community, you can share your list of banned um, viewers. So basically what will happen is Let's say, um, let's say somebody named, um, Grills My Pickle shows up. This is an old stream reference. Someone named Grills My Pickle shows up to my stream. I might get an alert saying, hey, this person's been banned in so-and-so stream. I see that alert. No one else sees it. I think the mods will see it too. Um, but like no one else will see that alert, but I will see it so I can know, okay, this person got banned. I wonder why. And that's not to say I'm going to immediately ban them, but it'll sort of be like, a, all right, I'm going to keep an eye on you because maybe it was a mistake or maybe they're just not passing the vibe check. Um, so definitely reach out to streamer friends if you have them. Like, please feel free to ask them like, hey, do you mind sharing ban lists? Yeah, it puts it as monitored. Thank you. Yeah, you can see the notes. Um, it's extremely useful. Um, but I will say I, I totally empathize with wanting viewers and wanting to grow your community. But if you just let every single person hang out, not all of them are going to respect you. And it's not going to be fun, you know? Is it a good idea to create a network with other VTubers? Do you mean like an official, like, um, what's it called? Like streamer network? If you're interested, partners are able to make a streamer network. I think it is something only Twitch partners can do. I can't speak on that. I don't feel... Like, yeah, truthfully, I don't know if I'm, like, experienced enough to speak on whether or not networks work. Um, I think having streamers you vibe with and like to collab with is always good. Um, mods will see it can confirm. Cool. Yeah, I, I have, I have my, my mod, my ban list with a few other streamers whose communities I like and respect. And I know we have the same, um, general vibes. I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, most streamers genuinely have the same rules. Cause it's like, I don't want to be treated like dirt in my own community, <laughs> you know? Um, but if I can summarize, I would say... It's better to ban someone than to get a view from somebody who doesn't respect you. Um, will it take longer to grow? Maybe. Will your mental health be better? Probably, <laughs> you know? Um, community moderation is very tricky. Um, I think a really good question to ask yourself is, what is my ideal community as a viewer, right? What is my ideal community to hang out in as a viewer? And how do I cultivate that as a streamer? And a lot of that just comes down to vibe checks. You know, if someone's not respecting you, they, they probably, they, you probably don't want them there. <laughs> Sounds like me when I deleted Snapchat. <laughs> I will say, just as a quick sidebar suggestion for new streamers, I personally really recommend turning DMs off. Turn off whispers on Twitch. Turn off Discord DMs unless it's from a friend. Because um, something I noticed when I first started streaming, I didn't know to do that. And so the moment I would pop up as online on Discord, I would have a few people who would immediately start DMing me constantly. Um, and they would immediately stop if I was not online. And it started giving me anxiety because I was like, I can't be giving you one-on-one -on -one attention. I have like a million other things to be doing. Um, and so what I noticed is I eventually turned off private DMs and every single one of those people stopped showing up to stream. And I'm not saying that they're a bad person or I have any beef with them, but it's basically what I noticed is once they no longer had the ability to have my undivided attention at their beck and call, they were no longer interested in my community. Um, and that's not necessarily the type of community member I want in my community. Does that make sense? Um, just, I, just don't, just don't have random DMs open is my personal recommendation. Especially now at my size, I'll just get random dms all the time and i don't have time for it i'm sorry i'm one vtuber i just i just don't have time for it um if you're going to dm someone please just get to the point please 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 just saying hi with like five emojis i don't know what you want i don't know what that means um saying hi um loved your stream would you be interested in doing xyz that's at least letting me know what this is about right but just saying hello doesn't tell me anything and just makes me a little anxious bean <laughs>
You'd want to have your chat talking, talking, talking with you, but also each other. Yes. Can I ask a question? Yes. What is your question? Oh, oh, sorry. I see what you're saying, Zane. Yeah, please don't just DM someone, can I ask a question? This also goes for chat. Please just ask it. If you don't think you should, then don't. Trust your judgment. Um, but it's it's so much faster to just say, hey, do you mind if I ask blank question? Like, for example, um, do you mind if I ask about your commission prices? Or I will say the only exception to this rule, please don't ask about collabs in a live stream. Unless like they, unless they are the one to bring it up. Like if a streamer is the one to say, hey, you, DM me for a collab, please don't just like walk into a stream asking for a collab. It's very uncomfortable um, because you're like put on the spot, right? Like, cause now I'm live and have to like, and it's just not, it's very uncomfy. Um, it's cool if you want to collab with someone, please do it off stream, <laughs> please. <laughs> As a side note, it's fine to bot people over the use of certain Twitch extension emotes. Also, yeah, what Kev said. Yeah, if there's certain emotes you don't like, like in my Discord, I personally don't allow outside emotes in my server or stickers, mostly because I can't control what people are using then. Um, so it's not that I want people to not show off their stuff. It's like, I can't control if it's like bad. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm hello. That sounds rude for collabs. Yeah, please, please. Um, as another quick side note, please don't ask for a collab until you've started streaming. I've had a few people reach out to me and be like, oh, would you be interested? I'm like, you don't even have a Twitch channel yet. And that's not because I'm trying to be hot and be like, oh, you don't have followers. You are beneath me. It's more that I'm not going to collab with someone until I know their vibe, right? Because if I'm doing a collab, I'm introducing my community to someone else's community. And I've heard a lot of horror stories about people doing a collab and then halfway through their collab partner says something extremely upsetting and they didn't know um so please make sure you have streams that are available to watch because i've had situations where like i was genuinely interested in collabing with someone and they didn't have any vods or clips so i'm like i don't know your vibe i don't i don't know what i'm signing up for here I remember the one collab I was asked about after I did all the work, the guy vanished like a ghost. Yeah, personally, I do not collab with someone unless I think I know them well. I don't think I did a collab for the first like three or four months of streaming. Um, and personally, I'd recommend don't do collabs for your first month or two. Um, not because I don't want you to make friends, but because you want your community to have an idea of who you are. And I've seen some VTubers who were just immediately doing collab after collab after collab. And that's fun, but like their community didn't really know them as an individual streamer. So I would say worry about collabs later. Get to know your own vibe, get to know your own community, and then start doing collabs. Had someone ask me to collab on their second stream. Oh, I've been there. And it's, it's, it don't be wrong. It's so flattering. It's so nice. Like when people want to collab with me, I do think it's very flattering and it's very nice, but it's also very uncomfortable. <laughs> when it's live, it's very uncomfortable. Please don't do that. Um, we can keep talking about this, but I also want to model, um, because I have the time for it. I want to model all of those design tips I just gave y'all. Um, I want to show you how to then make that. I want to show you how to basically come up with a quick VTuber design using the steps I made. Um, I don't want to forget to do that. So I'm going to just bring up Clip Studio Paint and we're just going to come up with a VTuber design on the fly real quick. A collab should be like a job interview. You have to prove it's a good idea. The thing is, I would say if you want to collab, please also bring an idea of what you want to do. Also, sorry, thank you for all the hydrates. Please show up with an idea of what you want to do for a collab because it's it's kind of awkward. Someone's like, you want to collab? And it's like, oh, sure. What did you have in mind? I'm like, I don't know. I've made that mistake before. It's very uncomfortable. Bring ideas, specifically ideas that you think your collab partner would like, <laughs> right? Um, for example, I love Comfy, Comfy Catboy as a streamer. He's phenomenal. He's so sweet. Um, he has excellent vibes. He doesn't really play FPS games. I would not recommend that we do a Valorant collab unless it was specifically to be like, watch two non-FPS players fail, right? Um, but we played Phasmophobia together as a Halloween collab because we're like, we're all a bunch of babies. This will be really fun. May I ask a slightly off topic question? Yeah, go for it. I know it sounds stupid. I feel very self-conscious hearing my own voice. So this is something everyone deals with. My recommendation is exposure therapy. <laughs> Basically, just record yourself. Even if it's just your voice, even if it's just on your phone, force yourself to hear yourself 
to get over that hurdle because you're gonna have to listen to yourself yeah you just you gotta do it i will remind you how you hear yourself is different from other how you hear yourself is different from how other people hear you i hated my voice for a long time and whenever i stream everyone's like oh you're so cute and i'm like uh thank you so just you just kind of gotta you gotta if you start that now then you can just edit your videos and be like oh, i sound weird whatever you know love your background thank you i did not make it credits are on twitch i did not make this it's very pretty it was dial oh, i forget their name i'm so sorry i'm really bad at names but it's credited because I, I can't do i can't do art <laughs> not like that I'm getting ready to start streaming just the other day, did some recording tests, my voice was not as bad as I thought it would be, that's the thing! We always view our voices as worse than they are, I can nearly guarantee you that. You are wrong when they said they're cute, thank you. I think the embarrassing thing is I didn't realize how much I like, talk to myself until I started streaming, because you just can't avoid it. <laughs> ah! And I was so embarrassed by that, I didn't realize how much I'm like, bah, 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 bah. But it's something I do. My voice in my head and my ears are different. Yup, and it's weird, isn't it? At the moment, I average 3 to 12 viewers. That's great! Wow. When I check the VODs, it goes to 80 to 130 plus. Okay, so. Um, first of all, quick, just quick ego boost. I think the statistic is that roughly 89% of Twitch streamers are not affiliated and are not partnered right um and now sometimes it's just because like friends want to stream to their friends or they're not committed um but if you're hitting the three to twelve range you're already in the top 10 percent of streamers so i want you to be proud of that i know it doesn't feel like a lot but it is a lot that's amazing and that's awesome um i will say vod views are weird and i don't personally completely understand them but i don't recommend using vod views as a metric um because there's like a million different reasons you'll get vod views um the bigger way to handle growth, the best advice I've heard is most of your growth on Twitch happens off Twitch. And I know that sounds really confusing, but the reality is Twitch does not have the best algorithm for streamers who are starting out. Um, by far, most of my viewers have found me from TikTok. I've been found from Etsy, from Twitch, uh, from, sorry, from Twitter. Um, but I have, uh, once you start hitting 10 average viewers, you might start showing up in the recommended bar and some people have found me from there. But first you gotta get to that point. And that's also my personal observation. I've noticed as small, as, as, as few as 10 average viewers can get you in recommended up to, you know, 100, 200, 5,000. Um, but I would say the best way to focus on getting more people to find you is to learn another algorithm uh, just Twitter is fine. Just TikTok is fine. Just YouTube is fine. Start small. Don't you don't have to start with every single social media platform. I'm glad I did that personally. Um, I started with just Twitter, and I would just post consistently. Quick twit, quick Twitter, Twitter tips. Um, try and post at least once a day. Um, they like active accounts twice a day if you can help it. Um, generally speaking, I've found an Eastern time best times post early in the morning and later in the evening um because people aren't really looking on twitter as much during the work day um don't use more than two hashtags three if you want to push it but more than that twitter just views you as spam um and also keep things different don't just always do text tweets you can if you want but once in a while tweeting a picture um tweeting a video can help differentiate your own feed um uh, you have any tools for learning about algorithms honestly so some social media platforms will tell you um, Twitter business will straight up give you tips on like how to make a Twitter account that they don't think is a bot. Like literally like look up Twitter algorithm business and I'm pretty sure that should be one of the first things. What the heck, Sylvia? Thank you for the tier one. I'm really glad that this is helpful <laughs> and, and reassuring. Thank you so much. That's so sweet. I appreciate it. Um, I will say TikTok's algorithm is an absolute mess and no one understands it. So please don't stress because literally no one understands it. But like you, uh, Facebook and Instagram, I'm pretty sure Meta like tells people what to publish and what not to publish. Um, but there's some really good YouTube videos out there. Literally, I'm telling you, tutorials exist for everything. Um, but Cabal the VTuber and Pumpkin Potion the VTuber, they've both done really good videos on these topics and they've like actually worked in marketing. So I'd say look up them on YouTube because they like know what they're talking about. <laughs> they have really good videos on this. Um, 
I've made it this far without making a Twitter account. I won't break now. And also, don't feel like you need one. Um, it can help. Um, but also, don't get a social media platform if you don't like it. Because if you don't like it, you're not going to use it. And that's a waste of your time. Twitch and YouTube have kingmaker algorithms. Uh, that's what makes them the most money. A lot of your growth is going to come from platforms that want viewers to see a lot of different content. That is extremely well said. Yes. Um, I think that's a really good point. Um, so that's why you need to find other places. Because like once you start getting views, then you start getting pushed more. I'm glad this is helpful. I Like I said, I haven't like worked in marketing or anything. These are just what I've learned. And I just want to share it because like this stuff is confusing. <laughs> if I can make it accessible i want to do that um we're gonna move back over here so to circle back to those tips i was giving those steps i was giving we're gonna really quick just come up with a vtuber design this is a design i've made before um so i'm just gonna go to it because i know it um so the first stage of this is our concept phase right so oh yeah sorry zane i will be working on your your uh uh, uh, uh png i promise it's on my to-do list i'm on tv y'all <laughs> So, um, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Concept phase. Concept phase first, right? Oh, I'm going to make this bigger for y'all to read it. That's better. Uh, so, um, species. I'm going to do a, uh, sorry, not a wolf. I'm going to do a husky VTuber. I like huskies. They're cute. There's a lot of cool design aesthetics. I'm a dog. Uh, let me do this um age um also you can also do like gender identity stuff in here uh we're gonna do a he him husky man um i'm gonna have him at like i'm gonna say he's gonna be like 22 uh young adults ish but like moving into his mid-20s what have you right um husky as in a husky dog um for his personality Uh, I'm going to just throw out some adjectives. I want him to be cool, like sort of cool headed demeanor. Um, I want him to be mature. I want him to be a little reserved. And I think I want him to be um, punk adjacent, punk ish, right? Like kind of grunge, but not fully committed. Um, and then for his job, I'm going to say that he is a snowboard instructor. I just came up with this on the spot. Okay. But we're already kind of getting ideas from this, right? So I, he's he likes the cold weather. Um, he works in the cold weather. He's kind of a cool guy. Um, he's kind of he's kind of punkish and cool and mature. So how do we now take these ideas and distill them into a design? So... Um, original oc please do not steal <laughs> so i'm horrible at anatomy um so don't judge me for what's about to happen next um usually i like to start with just the head and then i can add a body once i've like figured out their design but for today i'll do everything so first we're gonna get a noggin i just start with a circle cut that circle in half um, because he wa I want him to look a little bit more mature, I'm not going to give him a really round face. I'm going to give him um, a face that's a little bit more angular and a little bit on the longer side. He's going to have higher cheekbones. Uh, I'm going to move this down. He's also going to have big husky ears. Where are you? There's my head. He's gonna have big husky ears. Also, normally I'd have like a husky dog reference here. Uh, I forgot to grab one, I'm sorry. Uh, but he's gonna have big dog ears on the top of his head that are gonna be nice and fluffy. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and because I want him to be a little bit older and more mature, I'm also gonna give him eyes that are a little bit smaller. Right, because if I gave him eyes like this, that communicates a very different character. So I want him to have eyes that are a little bit smaller, um, a little bit more narrow, a little bit more mature. Um, he's somebody who 
uh, doesn't really smile because he's kind of reserved. So his mouth's a little downturned. Um, yes, uh, he's going to have a long nose. Um, because he's an athlete, I might give him like a scar or a scrape on his face. I think I'll just give him a little, a little something like that. Maybe he like fell into a branch or something. I don't know. I don't know how that works, but for now, we're just going to throw something down on his face. Um, now, I want to think about movement for him, right? So I'm going to give him um, bangs, but he's pulled some of them up into like a, a little loose, um, almost like ponytail situation, right? So he's got his bangs all pulled up. So he, he doesn't get his hair in his eyes. His hairline's going to be down here. Sorry, hold on. I have to think about a hairline. Yeah. So he's going to have some bangs that are pulled up. So he'll have this little piece that moves around when he's talking. Um, I'm actually going to resize that to be a little bit bigger. Uh, but he's going to have some hair. Uh, and then he's going to have some pieces that are like... He's going to have a little piece here that fell out of his bun because it was too short. Uh, and then the challenge when you're doing characters like me, where they have ears on the head. So they, human faces, we're used to ears on the sides. Um, but I don't want to do that personally for this design, so I'm going to give him some bangs that fall down on the side like this. So, like, these aren't in his face while he's, he's, he's snowboarding, but he still has these pieces framing his face. Also, I'm going to make them a little asymmetrical. I'm going to make one longer than the other. Um, like, he cut his own hair and then didn't cut it evenly and just didn't care enough to fix it. little bit of pieces like that um and then these pieces are like pulled back and maybe he has some hair clips to keep his hair out of his face um and then we have a neck and i know his face is weird and i know his head is like kind of awkward but that's you know i'm actually gonna purposely like make this not very good um because the point is you don't have to be like an incredible artist for this to work right like i personally don't think this is my best work at all and that's fine because what matters is that people have an idea of what I'm communicating. I am going to make him smaller to fit on my canvas. So I'm going to just go... Um, I'm also going to give him... Um, nope, that's not what I want. I'm also going to give him longer hair on the sides. Right, he has, he has hair falling. And you know what I actually just thought of? To better communicate that he's kind of athletic, instead of giving him hair clips, and instead of giving him bangs like that, I'm going to give him goggles. To communicate that he is a snowboarder. I don't know what goggles look like, so I have to get a reference for that. But assume these are goggles, right? Uh, whatever the hell that looks like. Those are those are goggles. Um, and now I know he he lives in a colder in climate because he's like a snowboard instructor. So we're going to just throw down a body real quick because he's a snowboarder. He's going to be someone who's kind of fit, um, kind of being the operative word. Hold on, I need a bigger eraser. Hold on. My anatomy's bad and I don't care. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Neep knobs go there. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Hips. Legs. Honestly, I don't really care what's down there because it's not as important um, as the upper body because the upper body is what gets seen the most by viewers. Arms, 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 arms. There's hands somewhere. They're not even who cares. I don't. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I should have prepared this beforehand. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't have time. Um, so I want him to have a coat. Uh, yeah, it's like classic Digimon thing, I guess, but whatever snowboarding goggles look like. Um, I'm gonna give him a coat. I wanna be a little inspired by streetwear though, cause he's like cool. Um, so I think I'm gonna give him a coat that has a high collar and then it's, unzipped because he's like off the mountain right now right so his coat's open 
Um, it can be a zipper here. Um, zippers are a great source of movement for a design, especially in live 2D. Uh, so we've got a zipper there. Here's his coat. Um, his coat can be, you know what? We're gonna make his coat kind of long because it's gonna keep him warm, I guess. Um, so he can have pants and he can have maybe a, a, just some kind of undershirt. Um, maybe he has some kind of patch to denote that he's an instructor or like snow patrol or something like that. Um, and that's already like a design, right? And you can even like, if you're looking to give a reference to an artist, you can say like, here's a zipper. Um, these are snowboarding. goggles um uh you could say that this is like a winter coat and then you could provide some reference images of like like heavy winter streetwear coats um we could show off his abs and have him be completely shirtless because maybe he's like a cool fuck boy like right you can really you can really kind of get experimental with it um but again remembering silhouettes um remembering to avoid ladders that's why i wanted the coat to be kind of longer uh, yes, he has a big, big, fluffy tail. Big, fluffy tail, uwu. Um, to sell the fact that he is a husky, um, what I think I would do is for his eyes. Um, first of all, I would give him, like, big old bean brows, because if you look at husky patterns, right, they'll have, like, those little, like, eyebrows, almost. Um, and then some huskies also have, um, uh, mono uh, what's the word? I forget the word for it, but they'll have two different colored eyes. So I might make one of his eyes, um, a light blue. And then I might make his other eye, um, brown. Just to give some, some interesting, um, heterochromia, thank you. Right, so I might do something like that for his eyes. Um, and then huskies come in a few different colors. There's like whites and grays and stuff. So I would probably choose a color palette where browns and um, grays are maybe the main colors. And then I'll give him a blue accent color, right? So, like, his coat might be gray, and his hair might be a sort of brownish-gray color, and his eyebrows might be a brownish-gray color. Um, and then that blue will sort of be the accent. Um, or maybe the undershirt would be blue, or maybe his patch would be blue. Um, but right there, I've already just, like, kind of thrown together a color palette, you know? Um, typically, when I think of, like, quote-unquote cool characters, I'm thinking of, like, darker purples and, and darker blues. So we could also throw in, like, a a darkish purple blue color maybe make that this color and then maybe use that eye color as an accent somewhere else so i'm sorry he looks like the hokage running the leaf village oh my god i just wanted to <laughs> i just wanted to throw together an example all right fine i'll come up with a different example you know what we'll do example number two fine so i was concept number one y'all bully me being bullied all right so that's one but he turned into the hokage and y'all are uh, clowning on me for it so concept number two this is another design i've i've done before because i think it'd be fun um concept number two um species i'm gonna make a ghost girl i want her to be kind of spooky um i'm gonna have her be uh 19 uh she's a college student who died uh so job student um personality uh she's gonna be gloomy and mysterious um and uh serious and uh, maybe a little shy, right? How did she die? That's a fun lore tidbit. Um, she 
uh, liked reading and got suffocated in a pile of books. Let's let's say that. <laughs> let's say that. Um, I do think ghosts are really fun because you have to answer that question. It's like, how do they die? Um, so we're going to get... So she's going to be a little bit younger. So I'm going to make her face a little bit rounder. Um, so we're going to just real quick. And again, you don't have to be an artist for this. Uh, so making her face a little bit smaller, a little bit rounder. Um, year. Let's hold on. Bit, 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 bit. Year. Um, because she's gloomy, I'm going to give her, I still want to give her bigger eyes. Hold on. Let me get this right. She's sort of got this like serious look to her, but they're big. I want them to be like a bigger feature of her design. Um, she's sort of frowning. She doesn't really love that she died without getting a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Um, just kind of serious. Uh, and so to make the ghost thing fun and to give her an interesting silhouette, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give her hair that sort of defies gravity a bit and gets all, gets all, um, what's the word? Uh, just kind of like floats around her head, right? So her hair is just kind of like floating all around her. This is an effect you can do in Vroid Studio too. Um, it's possible to make hair like defy gravity like this. I'm gonna give her a big old ahoge uh, to keep things interesting. Um, we'll give her straight across bangs because she was kind of a serious student in life. So she's got bangs and then she'll have little side pieces and hairs that are all just kind of like floating around. So she has hair that sort of has this like kind of effect around her face. Um, uh, for outfit, um, since she was a student, she'll be wearing a student uniform, but it's gonna be all kind of sad and ragged, right? So we'll give her, since I also said she was like a student who was reading and then presumably passed in the stacks, uh, we'll give her like a little vest. Um, and maybe some of the vest is, like, tattered. Uh, and, like, frayed a bit. And maybe it's got some, like, dirt on it. Uh, she'll have her little button-down shirt. Vest, 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 vest. Maybe one of her sleeves is like completely torn off and then the other one's sort of all the way down and then rolled up, right? And then again, you'll add like frays and like cuts and tears. Uh, and so that also like asymmetry can really play with, um, asymmetry can really play with a design too. Um, she'll have a, and I'll just give her like a long, pleated skirt, almost like 80s style. Uh, she'll just have like a skirt uh, and then her shirt is like maybe a little loose and tucked out from underneath it. Uh, yes, and that's a really rough sketch and it's not very good and I don't care. Um, four colors. So purple and gold, if you look on this color wheel, you can kind of see purple and gold um, can look really nice together. So I think I'm gonna give her lots of purples um, I know ghosts tend to get, like, white hair, um, but I think I'm gonna have purples be in her color palette. I think we'll give her maybe silvery purple hair. I'm gonna give her maybe orange eyes. Uh, right, so her eyes are like that. Um, if we wanted to, we could give her some blood accents, but yes, if a ghost, some kind of a talisman of some sort, yes, um... Depending on culture, too, that can really inform what a ghost looks like. But already we have a color palette. Um, and because her eyes are gold, we could also use that color for her vest and make it sort of cream colored. Cream colored vest, right? Um, the skirt could be a darker color. Um, 
But right, like, so already taking those design concepts, we're thinking about movement, her hair. She doesn't really have any accessories, so I could give her, um, I could give her a scarf. Uh, where's my, I could give her a big old scarf here, right? Um, maybe she pierced her ears, I give her an earring. Uh, maybe I give her glasses. Those don't add movement, but they do add character. Um, maybe she's wearing a coat, but like only half of it. Um, yeah, you could add little like fire motes around her and those can have movement. Um, if she was Japanese, we could give her that, um, I'm blinking on what it's called, but around the head, um, <laughs> non-binary colors, NB ghost. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was the scarf. Oh, that's good. The scarf that her senpai gave her before she died. Um, we could give her maybe a necklace that was from a relative that she really loved. Um, but already we're giving her movement. We're giving her character. You look at her and you have sort of an idea of who she is. So I have a feeling she was murdered and she was just telling chat she was died in the library. And that's also fun lore. But again, like, am I a great artist? Frankly, not with this. No, but... This already is communicating a lot of ideas. This is already giving your reference artist way more to work with. Um, and again, you can find reference images for eyes if you're not really good at them. Um, you can definitely look for some, but like even just saying like, I want big eyes and maybe they're like a little tired because she's like, man, death is tiresome and I'm over it. Um, that's already so much, right? So I just wanted to show y'all like, Using these tips can give you some ideas. It can give you something to work with. We're thinking about the shape of a design and the silhouette of a design and, and making it feel visually distinct. Um, is this like the best thing I've ever drawn? Definitely not. Um, it would also have been a lot easier if I was giving myself references, <laughs> but it's already an idea. So my whole point is like, you don't need to make the most amazing art ever. You just need to have an idea of what you want your VTuber to look like so you can then give it to another artist or use it in another piece of software to refine it. So I hope that this helped. Um, I hope this sort of like <laughs> mad dash sketch was useful. Uh, mini art stream, yes, with our, our scuffed Hokage, which was not at all my intent, but you know, it's gonna be what it's gonna be, I guess. <laughs> um, that's so sh movement, but I hope this was helpful. Um, I really did my best to make this, like, make sense. Um, please feel free, if you are an artist, let us know below what tips you have for, uh, designing a VTuber, especially if you work on the rigging side of things. What do you wish people would know about designing a VTuber when they have to be rigged for movement? But thank you for watching, I appreciate it. <laughs>